I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. I'm Arthur Boyle of Performance Appraisal Services. We're residential real estate appraisers with a company founded in 1994 by Mike Gianelli and I in the basement of my house in Malden. We've since grown to have offices in Malden and Pembroke. We serve the Eastern Mass counties, including Cape Cod. A good client for us is an attorney or a private landowner or a private property owner who's going through a probate process or a divorce division of property. Call us at 781-293-6900. Ask for Arthur Boyle or Amanda Boyle Grazioso. Our first name is Performance. All comments made in open session will be recorded. Um, I'll, as Vice Chair, I'll run the meeting until Dan gets here. Um, tonight we have a public hearing and um, it's 7.02 p.m. and we're going to open the public hearing on the application of Grissom Park Company LLP of 293R Washington Street, Norwell, Mass, requesting site plan approval under the zoning bylaws of the Town of Pembroke, Section 57, site plan approval for two industrial buildings totaling 20,000 square feet, consisting of 14 modular units. The property is located in the Industrial A Zoning District at 260-280 Oak Street, Pembroke, Mass. Um, Let's let um, Tom come in. Okay, do we have a copy of the site plan that's going to go up on the board? If we don't have one in front of us. Randy, did you sign? You sign it. Okay, I'll never be able. You didn't happen to bring any copies, did you? Okay. Um, there's some plans that's here. I've got three copies here. Um, I, I just can't see that, so could we maybe put one on the table for this end? Can you see it, Brian? Not exactly. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, so do you want to start by telling us? Yes, I'll start. With the project, how the project has evolved? Sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Brian Murphy. Um, I've been in front of you before, so uh, I will represent the ownership for this uh, six acre parcel. Um, uh, I was in a couple of months ago to, to talk to the, to the board about, about this uh, development. Um, so I hope uh, a lot of this is uh, a review of what we proposed because uh, not, not much has changed. Um, so just to give you a uh, sense of, of what, uh, what we're doing, a little review. Um, I'll bring this up here if that's all right. Yeah, that's fine. see it. Okay. Uh, Oak Street here. Um, Corbett Park is over here. Okay. Loop 3. So, one here, obviously. Are those two parcels or one parcel? Uh, these are two parcels. 260 and 280. Okay. So, um, what, we have the, the, the topography of the site is fairly flat. Um, this looks... Uh, this way. Um, what we are proposing, I'm going to go right to, I guess we're going to be proposing here. Um, this is what I came in to talk to the board about informally. 
um, a couple months ago is to phase the, the plan of development so that uh, what we're looking to do is to build uh, uh, two buildings in the back part of the, of the parcel um, and stump and grade this area to get it ready so that it's more marketable uh, and see what kind of interest we have um, from, uh, from uh, those who may want to have something built to suit or, or whatnot. Um, so uh, there's a couple of nuances that, that I discussed last time, and that is what we would like to do is you know, rather than um, you know, create a whole uh, another entrance here to get all the way back um, for phase one. We'd like to utilize what's there as, as an existing entrance for what is ultimately going to be the shop that we want to uh, build for ourselves. Um, as Realty, realty construction. Uh, we utilize about 10,000 square feet in the park today, um, and we'd like to free up that space, rent that space out, and consolidate our operations into this back area here. Um, this area, this building here, uh, will be more of a, I guess I'll call it a higher end um, contractor bay. Um, it'll allow for drive-ins. One of the things that is Cobra Park evolves over time, um, one of the, the, the types of uh, units that are most desirable and go the quickest are ones that are more the contractor bays, the smaller bays, that you know are, are flexible so that if they want 1,500, I can give them 1,500 if, well. if they want 3,000, I can give them 3,000 and so forth. Um, so those, we can't keep in inventory. So uh, that uh, is what we're proposing for these. Now, these will be a little bit different in their design and the fact that they uh, were proposing that there'll be a freestanding, um, uh, free span uh, steel buildings um, with a more of an updated, uh, nice, nicer facade to them um, that uh, will allow for uh, um, uh, a lot of flexibility and openings and th things of that nature that uh, block buildings uh, don't necessarily uh, allow for it to now with today's code and whatnot. So um, that is what we're, we're proposing. In order just to get this up and running, have you know access in through here, we kind of talked about it, it'd be a fairly, I would say, a low traffic site because most of most of our, you know, most of the traffic for this building is going to be us, and it's, you know, it's uh, four or five employees. Uh, and this here, you know, you're going to have smaller uh, building, smaller companies, you know, with uh, light. So they'll be actually able to access out through the corporate park itself. Yes, they can access out in this way. They can access out into this way, which is, you know, people who go to these buildings today, you know, either come in through here where they come in, they pass the first long building on Cook Park Drive, and they, and they come around. What will be the impact on the traffic coming out of Corporate Park onto Oak Street? Um, because now everyone will be coming in and out of that one. Well, that not one. everybody. I mean, the people that do today in the park will, yeah. will continue to probably do today. I would say that 90% uh, of your traffic comes in and out of that main entrance yeah. over here at Corbett Park. Very few people actually utilize that. It's more mm -hmm. of these people here and maybe the people who actually use the bays in the back over on the other uh, on the other longer building. So you're saying that you'll have a little bit of a division between the people who are coming out this way? But these guys are going to come out through the main entrance of Corbett Park, right? Well, there's a building right here. There's a building, so these these buildings back up to. Is there, isn't there another building in front of those? Yes, yeah. there's yeah. building. Yeah. Right. There's a building so right here. That's a cut. Yeah. So, so how are they coming out? Railway right, 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 right now, they're yeah. closing. Yeah, yeah, and then where did oh. Should be a better map of it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of visibility as far as your sight lines. It's probably actually more visibility here now. Um, is this the, is this but he's saying you won't do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do, right here. Oh, we were just going to the next page. That's the that's secondary. That, that's not actually a primary entrance right there. 
Yes. It's for that front building where the exercise, was an exercise there or a church there or something? Yeah, although people from the side come out that way when it's crowded at the other right. so street. Right, so when it's crowded at the other street. If, I've uh, done that before. Oh, I'm sorry, what other street? If, uh, no, if you're on uh, Corporate Park Drive, <coughs> e it's easier to come out the front of the front building in that side than to go down Corporate Park Drive mm -hmm. when everyone's getting out of karate class. Are you saying there's a problem? <laughs> no, I'm just saying it's what people do. Oh. Uh, Brian, are you, are you going to build a road to connect this this road to the existing driveway? Yeah. yeah. Tent? You the, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm proposing that we utilize a, what is the existing road today. It's in, the, it's in place. In the phase, when phase two comes along, what I'm proposing is we take we create this road here that would would serve this back area and also obviously. But you're not going to create that road now. No. no. So these people would, would, would come out and go this way to get out. Correct. They to. Okay. Correct. But you're going to have a lot of truck traffic coming through doing that, right? It's a tight corner. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, yeah. it's not really... Um, no. I mean, Big it's a loading dock area. It's not so an 18-wheeler. I know. I know. Thing. I mean, the access point. Yeah. I think I'd, I'd just like to see, I mean, are we going to do a site visit on this? You may certainly ask to look at yeah. so. uh, I mean, I would, uh, personally, I, I don't understand enough of how yeah. this is going to work. Yeah, we like to walk it, I think. Reasonable to ask for a site, site walk. That makes sense. Um, now, did you, is this the same plan that was before ZBA last year? It's that a, needed it, it, some variances, or do you not need the variances anymore because we changed the bylaw? Um, I got the variances, but I don't need the variances because we changed the bylaw. So, so to the extent you've changed the site plan from what they saw, you feel like it wouldn't? wouldn't. Is this the site plan they saw, or has it changed? Um, it's changed as far as uh, maybe you know some feet, you know, shifting these a, a few feet here and there. But um, ultimately, you know, the, the, the plan that was presented before was really just to kind of uh, show what we were looking, you know, to do as, as far as needing setbacks and whatnot. It wasn't necessarily, okay, this is the site plan. Yeah, cooked, you know, to, you know, all together. So um, what we were able to do and, and what, the, what the planning board supported was, you know, changing some of the setbacks and travel away. Um, uh, items and things of that nature so that uh, that allowed for us to do this plan if you looked at what we uh, presented a while back there's really not a lot of change to it there were five buildings before wasn't there? well there was the buildings here we got buildings here so you're thinking that instead of building what you'd originally planned here that you if you grade it, that you might be able to sell it to a single tenant or for a different kind of building? Sell or it or, or land lease it or build to suit. Build yes. to suit sort of thing. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, it's one of those things that um, uh, it, 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 when we've seen this many times. People have a hard time visualizing a, a parcel um, without it really being kind of set to grade and, and uh, looking somewhat ready. Yeah, at one point I think we had talked with you about sort of even that property um, on the other side of Corporate Park Drive. And yeah, and that, in fact I'm very close to an agreement on that, on that parcel. <coughs> Not a hotel. Well, we were sort of hoping for a hotel. Yeah, so, um, Somewhere in I, town. Yeah, I think you'll be happy with the, um, with the tenant, the user. Um, but uh, that'll, be, uh, that'll be coming out in the next um, couple of weeks. We've been trying to get a hotel. There just aren't many spots for it in town. Get a we still have room. We'd for a hotel? Like sure. Really? We'd all like one. I know. But so far we haven't attracted one. Right. We've tried. Motel 6. <laughs> no, okay, Motel 6 doesn't get you. Oh, oh, all right. All right. <laughs> we're, we're trying to actually make money here. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> that's the game. Okay. So if, if you don't mind, I'll continue on. I'll let Sue um, scratch them up. Uh, you know, like we will just talk about the uh, engineering associated with the uh, with the project. Like Brian, two-phase project. 
Um, phase one is the southerly portion. Phase two will be the northerly portion. Um, two industrial type buildings that total 20,000 square feet. Um, what we're looking at included in this development is underground utilities, <coughs> gas, water, electric, to be accessed coming off of the existing utility systems within Corporate Park. Um, we're looking at three subsurface um, infiltration chambers, so all the water will be retained on site up to and including the 100 year storm. And these are these three systems here. You can see them. Included is a soil absorption, it's independent septic system contained on site. We're also looking as part of, like Ryan had mentioned, phase one to regrade this area in here. And for the interim condition, this also contains up to the 100 year storm. So there's very minimal runoff. Actually, there's no runoff from this area in this direction here onto Oak Street. The only portion that will run off is from the top of the berm, roughly 20 feet, and it will be less than what's existing now in pre conditions. So for all four storm events, you know, 22 year, 10 year, 25 and 100 year storm, there is the post condition on that. Is this the same here? Is this that becomes a retention basin? In theory, a temporary retention basin right. okay. through phase one, yes. And I see you've got, it looks like, and I haven't looked at the closer, but you've got a bunch of underground. Yes, three. That, that overflows into here? No. No, no they, they infiltrate the 100 the meters storm event. Okay. What does that mean, if I may ask? Um, it means that everything is infiltrated. The soils yeah. are conducive enough for infiltration. We use a conservative um, infiltration rate um, between an A and a B soil. Our existing um, test pit information confirms the soil is like an A. Um, it's loamy sand, which is like a to be technical, a 2.4, we use like a 1.5, um, 1 we use between a, um, an A and a B. So by infiltrate, you mean that it's going to go flow through the soil to yes, the groundwater, to the ground as, opposed to as opposed to, to overland draining flow. onto over, overland yes. to other properties? Coming out and flowing into overland into the existing catch basin and then into the existing underground system through here. So we're just retaining and infiltrating everything on site. So the, the intent of the temporary basin is just to control the water on those on that lot. On this section here. Yeah. But because this right is at, permanently designed yes, to control the because right now you know that this is the vegetation has been removed here. Mm -hmm. So temporarily we needed a reason we needed to contain the runoff since this has been um, the vegetation is no longer there, we needed to contain this runoff temporarily until phase two got up and running, which we're roughly thinking maybe, you know, six to twelve months from now there'll be some type of how, how much material is being removed from that site? From this site? I do have that number. Mm -hmm. Right here, we don't have much being removed. We need to fill in because there is a depression. See the existing depression all in through here? I, I have moved to the green. Oh, just... sorry. Yeah, there's an existing depression here mm -hmm. that roughly is about two, two and a half, three feet okay. deep. So we're bringing in material to bring this up. To be all at elevation, one oh nine and a half. I'm just thinking less than that. So I, I we won't be able to bring this stuff in. We're not no, taking no. from here, we're bringing in okay. to fill this So you, you're not actually removing soil? No. You're bringing material in. We'll bring material in. Okay. Right. Um, we're out providing parking. Um, not actually a parking lot, per se, but we're providing parking for each one of the individual bays and for the building in the back, and we meet the parking and setback requirements for the industrial A district. Um, we calculated we needed 28 parking spaces, two per 14 employees, and we're providing 32. And that also doesn't include any parking that may be achieved within the bays themselves. Um, like I said, all the, the utilities are going to be accessed coming off of the underground utilities within Corporate Park. But in this back building where you're going to have um, Unicorn Realty, do you need to have any um Handicap parking? Yes, we have one in the back. Okay, so maybe it's on a different plan. Yeah, we'll be on to We have one in the back. 
have one right here, van accessible space. All right. And we have another one for building one, uh, two along the back of the road. So there's two handicapped spaces. Do you guys have any other questions? When we uh, schedule site walking, I'm sure we'll come up with more. Yeah, my, my question is mostly around traffic, which would be more the site walk. Um, we want to do a traffic study. We have some abutters here. Who? Yes, my name is Lou Stone. I live on Oak Street. My question is about the second phase of your project. Mm -hmm. You're talking six to 12 months. Possibly, I don't know. The exact Around, time. I know it's hard to. Yeah, you don't know. But this is just an estimate. Right. Okay, fine. Well, my concern is, is that the residents of Pembroke and especially on Oak Street, are just <laughs> appalled at how you've decimated that property, and so I want to ask, how? What plans do you have? I understand you're going to bring some fill in. You've right. already covered that. Are you going to do anything to make that look like Pembroke should look? It's awful. It, it's, a, it's a sore spot for the town to drive in and see that. Well, and you've just decimated that whole place. So are you going to do anything to try to make some kind of a visual improvement? Along the berm, the front 20 feet, yes, there will be some type of landscaping. And then when phase two comes along, they will incorporate more landscaping the, at that time. It's just an interim condition until the phase two comes up and running. But right now we're looking at landscaping the, the first 20 feet from Oak Street up to the berm. Do you have any idea of what that landscaping is going to look like? Is it going to do something to hide the rest of it as people approach that? Corner and they look out there, what they see now is that, is that going to try to be mitigated in any way? Um, I, at this uh, time, I believe we're just proposing just loan and seed at this point. So we don't have a landscape plan? The berm is at elevation 110 and the road is up 109. So it's like a one and a half, two foot berm. So would, it be, would it be better to level it and just plant it with grass? And make it well, grass? I, I think that's, that's, that's the intent. That yeah, that's the intent. Yeah. So when you level it, how are you going to make it look? Well, it's going to be loam seeds, like level. To temporary grade. grass to grade. If I could just step in, um, you know, uh, it's never it's never obviously visually easy once you you know you clear a bunch of trees to you know to to see especially with that area and I realize that um, I've got a property right there I want it to look as nice as possible um, you know what I would what I, we've talked about um, internally not not with my engineers because it's really not an engineering thing um, we've talked about you know what we're going to do with that front area and whatnot. Um, you know, we've talked about, you know, continuing when we, and we'd really like to, to not, well, I could do it now, we do it in phase two, it doesn't necessarily matter, but, you know, corporate park, and I think you've seen, you know, we, we certainly take a lot of pride in, especially for a flex industrial park, if you ever drive around, you know, we have some of the best landscaping that you'll ever see in a, in what really is a warehouse park. Um, so, we plan on doing a, you know, the same type of landscaping ultimately. Um, what I think that might be a, a, a nice uh, thing to do as far as, as we go into maybe the first, you know, even with the first phase is let's talk about, you know, maybe continuing and doing, doing that sidewalk along that front, get some trees planted, you know, along that front area as well, um, and uh, uh, create, you know, somewhat of a landscape buffer. It's not going to, you know, block out, you know, uh, everything. Um, but, I mean, it's just like, you know, if you go to the other side of Corporate Park Drive, that that area has been cleared at times in the past, too. And, you know, it's, it, it's all, uh, 
Well, that might work if you could maybe go ahead and do the side work and the landscaping that you know you're ultimately going to have to do and mm -hmm. that could be growing or looking better. And right. And if you look along here, I mean, there's never going to be necessarily anything. If you, there's a sidewalk, the existing sidewalk there. Mm -hmm. You know, you bring it right along, you, you put some trees, you know, uh, uh, along that front area as well. Um, uh, you know, it's not going to block everything, but it's soften the, uh, soften the look. And it's eventually going to be done anyways, because we do try to landscape the, the um, places. For well, if I could just mention on something that you said about the landscaping in Corporate Park, it's always been very well done, very well maintained. It's almost like a different bunch of people came in and decimated that property. Yeah. It's well, like, you know, two, two different groups of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, at some point, that was done at Cobra Park, too, you know, that um, hearing to that extent. And um, uh, my dad would here might say, if you were up in arms then, too, I don't know. But, you know, I, I, I ultimately, everything takes a little time to, to, you know, come back as, you know, something that's developable and, you know, uh, um, you know something that uh, is... Um, a credit to the town. I don't know why you couldn't have left the buffer around the outside, the buffer that was there. Yeah, I, 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 I would have liked to have, but the problem was it was, you know, uh, it was scrub pine, it was, you know, just, no, there was nothing really visually you know, nice about it. It was all coming down eventually anyways. Um, so uh, I would have liked to have been in front of the board before now. Um, maybe it wouldn't have been as like this as, as long as some, sometimes these things take a little time, you know? So well, when, when you go back to when you cut to when you're here tonight, a lot of time has gone by. Absolutely. And unfortunately, uh, people are not looking at corporate park owners and developers uh, as you would like to have them look at you because of that. Mm -hmm. People are not happy with you over that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm here tonight to get an understanding of what the plan for that area is. Okay. Right. Brian, if I may, when do you anticipate grading the site to the grades that you're showing here? I really can't do anything um, until I really have some permits. I've already been fined for, for, for clearing the trees before, so uh -huh. no, it's very specific. I have to have I have to have planning but I have to improved plan. Um, two things that I'd like to, to see. One is the site graded in accordance with your temporary grading, moved and seen, and I'd love to see a landscape plan, not for the home development, but just for the perimeter. And that way, the residents have an idea of what's happening out there. Okay, right, well, right now, we don't know. This is how I walk here. We can whatever. make that a condition of approval. Yeah. Well, I, what I'm what I'm starting to think is maybe a uh, loam and seed of the front um, happens before the building in the back. You know that we prioritize getting that cleaned up as part of of the progression of the site. Is there a reason um, that, why that couldn't fine. happen? We could, we could do that before we, we, we do it all. I, I would like to have a, a comprehensive permit for the... For oh, the, yeah, 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 no. You yeah. permit it all together, but just sure. request that you clean up the, f the front oh, before you yeah, do the back. Reality, you're going to do it all at the same reality, time. Because yeah, you're going to have the equipment. It's going to be stumped and, and, yeah. and, and, and grubbed and, uh, and integrated you, and all that. Are those you're not going to bring your equipment there? and send them home. Yeah. The are the dumpsters still up there? Which property is that on? Whose dumpsters that's, are they? That's on the Mayflower property, whatever. And who, who's, who owns that one? That has nothing to do with you? Oh. So, <laughs> that's a nice story, too. We, we had asked for fencing to go. We were supposed to get an eight foot fence around our property to protect, to shield from that. Okay. And have you guys talked about that? Is that, it's not we, on the plan, so I don't know. We've talked about, we've talked about. Uh, fencing and committed to fencing. Um, it's more to shield the eyesore from us rather than the other way around. Um, but yes, we've committed to doing it. Um, that's not uh, uh, really ever been in question. Um, but, but I don't see a fence on the site plan, right? Well, that's not part of the site yeah, right yeah. now. <laughs> right here. Right have, here. That's part of the site. Right well, That's actually, not part of the site well, actually, right now. Hold on. He's selling this as part A, part one, and part two. 
Yeah, well, but, uh, and this you know, is why would, in it, Loman, uh, I'm just trying to point out no, that I, I don't think the that. drawing would necessarily reflect a fence at this point no. on a parcel that's not exactly the one that's no, being proposed can, for development. Right, but we can talk about it. Well, Absolutely, well, you can wait, talk I'm about it. I'm trying to understand. This part is proposed for development. Is there going to be a fence here? Yes. Well, there should be. But yeah. I don't see it on this plan, so th it would be on this plan, wouldn't it? I think it's on the plans. Well, I'm not sure, but again, anything that's going to require a side yard setback or a front yard setback, et cetera, is going to, is going to, show, is going to have to be put onto the plan. I'm not as good at these guys as reading plans, I admit it. <laughs> okay. Hey, Sam. We're a team. Um, Okay, so, so the, and I, and I guess the question is on the front. You would probably want a fence on that front part now if you're going to be trying to make that front look good for a new tenant, right? Yeah, I, I think that um, we, we would certainly like to put a fence up um, as soon as I get you know, some, some permits to do something there. And also, I can't grade it with you know with a fence there. You know, it's it's I would, so I'd like but to it get would it be to grade and, and then get right. my fence up. But it should be part of the site plan we approve, right? That the fence would be on the site plan that, that we approve. That's fine. So that I mean, I have, I have no. and I'm sorry, it's, it is. Why not? I don't think it's part of that. I think what he's offering right now is mitigation. I think, in effect, he's saying. It is an offense part of the mitigation. Well, if he volunteers it, but I wouldn't condition it. Well, except for the fact that he destroyed what was essentially a buffer for the town between here and here. Unfortunately, the town didn't protect itself against devastation. No, it did. That's why he got fined. Well, well I don't see anywhere in know, the bylaw that puts it in the authority just, of somebody. I, I don't want to bring up old, old yeah, history, right. but, you know, we did talk about it a year before I actually did the clearing, mm -hmm. about clearing that site with the planning board. And it was one of the, one of the things the planning board said, yeah, that sounds great, because I wanted to do it to, to open it up to, from, to market it. I actually and thought at that point we were talking about a different site. Mm -hmm. We were talking about well, think, corporate I, park. No, I think if you so. cleared it and graded it and made it presentable. Well, the mm -hmm. problem was they gave me a cease and desist as soon as I cleared it, so I couldn't actually follow through. I oh, so to, you were going to finish? Yeah, I was going to finish it all. So you were going to grade it and yeah. loam it and seed it? Yeah. And they, I got a cease and desist, and then. And so you couldn't I was finish clearing it? Or, you know. So it wasn't until about a month or two ago that um, we came to a resolution with, um, uh, I'll call it a, a building inspector, but that's who was kind of uh, leading the, uh, um, the effort. So um, Brian and I could go back and forth about whether the offense is required here as part of this phase mm -hmm. of site plan approval. Are you planning to put one there? In which case, we don't have to have the discussion. <laughs> I am planning because I have no choice. I've because got, otherwise, I've got an it's not. Eyesore there that I can't get rid of. Get rid of. Right. And um, nobody's going to want to be there with a looking at a field of dumpsters. That's my no thinking. So, well, well, to market this, not just because the town wants it that way, but to market this, you're going to need a fence there, right? Correct. Correct. So I think that. Loaming and seeding, if we could just get maybe a little bit of a landscape plan here and a fence here, then we're going to have people like Lou and the other people who who live down Oak Street and off of Oak Street around North Pembroke um, who are coming up are going to say, oh, now this is the town I like. Absolutely. And then Absolutely. you'll have a property you can market and everyone will be happier. Absolutely. Right? I think so. Okay. So do we want to try to do a quick site view on the traffic pattern before we sign off on anything? Or? I'm not really sure. I mean, I'll be signing it off sounds on. like we, some of this is going to be yours, and then you're also going to sell the units to individuals. That no, they're going to lease them. They they're only have customers coming in looking for them, right? It's not going to be retail or anything like that? Yeah, it's just going to be, uh, you know, our typical customer is an HVAC contractor. So he's going to know how to get to his place. He's not going to have yeah. customers coming by looking yeah. for it and all that. So I'm not sure if it's. You're not so concerned about the traffic no, pattern no, really. internally? This is a dumb question, but how many units? Is this eight units or seven in the big building? Ten. 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 And, okay. and keep in mind. So that, that is two, not one, that one in the middle there. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just to keep in mind, it's, it, these are really uh, placeholders. Well, can change. They, 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 they may change. change. Maybe I'm kind of concerned is having two, two entrances. I know there's two existing ones, but we suddenly got a lot, a lot well, more gonna, traffic, then we're going to have a gonna, lot more, first more off, people going up the second entrance. First you off, go. you're going to have an entrance up there anyway when you but develop that property. They can't actually access this entrance from back high, It's very high. Right. But well, when they start doing that, they can't. I'm just saying we could have a situation like Dunkin' Donuts where people are coming in this way and blocking people going out that way. And because they're going to be here and here? Yes, and it clogs Oak Street. And, and if, if I may, I think that's why we really should do a site walk or site right. visit because um, the distances and whatnot are much clearer when you see it and, and uh, it will give a sense of a better sense for everybody what the traffic pattern is through there. Um, it's really very quiet coming out that entrance, and mm -hmm. this is not going to increase the you know, traffic by, you know, uh, very much. Um, but I, I, it would be, I think it, it makes sense for, for everybody to, to see. Um, and maybe it's, you know, everybody just goes by individually. I don't know, but I just, uh, there's, uh, it's, uh, it's got a it's got a, 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 a long it's got a long uh, distance between that entrance and say the park entrance, which you know, takes about ninety percent of the traffic today. Uh, you said I'm not really concerned about the internal traffic flow. That's if it doesn't work, it's your problem. Well, that's a good picture. <laughs> I just care that we don't yeah, mess up. Right. 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 Yeah. This is this basically the two entrances are roughly four hundred feet apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about four hundred acres. About that's yeah, about. It's the frontage of that building that's on the ocean. Right. Yeah, but we're looking at a locust map here. On C one. You can't really see it from back here. Yeah. yeah. One inch, two. Do you have a ruler? Why don't we go look at it? Yeah. You want to go now? <laughs> All right. So when can we schedule a site site visit? But that's almost 400, right? No, that's 200. But you're gonna, but we, might an inch. we might eliminate that entirely in the long run when we look at it and find out the best yeah, entrance right point. You guys want to scale it? What we're looking yeah. at is, yeah, do you have a, let's um, go look at it. That's all we're saying. Determine the entrance. That, I even took that old colony planning class on reading plans. That's a good idea. I still call it a rule. <laughs> okay. That's a yeah. It's the frontage of that building plus about 20 feet to the side of it. Very difficult for a large truck to get through there, my estimation. All right. Uh, can we schedule a side visit? What Saturday? Or Sunday? Saturday or Sunday? No, Saturday. That's Mother's Day. Oh, I'm not talking about this week. Okay. Uh, I'm out of town this weekend, but everybody else could go without me. And I could go by on no, my own. No, yeah, how about two weekends? This weekend too. Okay. Everybody's going to be busy. So you want to say the 20th? 20th. Saturday the 20th. And then do we want to continue the public hearing to. Yeah. Um, yes, I'll make a motion to continue the public hearing. Uh, w what do we have for dates in May? Uh, 22nd. Matthew, is it the 22nd of Monday? Um, so at the moment, the 22nd, you've got the continued 220 yeah. Center Street for architectural appearance mm -hmm. uh, at 7 o'clock. Yep. Mommy um, put this on around 8 o'clock. So yeah, you could continue this for like, you know, maybe 8 o'clock might make sense. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, okay, make, I'll make a motion. That That's the... Uh, the one at 7 o'clock, though, is the, the one on Center Street, right? Yeah, we go to 20 Center Street. Yeah, we'll probably try to hammer that out that night. Yeah, we're going to reach resolution. Um, I, I would say uh, continue the public hearing until, I'll make a motion that we continue the public hearing until May 22nd, 8 p.m., concerning the site plan. I'm sorry, your site plan number here? SP217. SP217, 8 p.m., Monday May 22nd. Do we have a second? Second. Yeah. Before we vote, can I just say there are some more butters here. Yeah. Did anybody else have anything else they wanted to have heard at tonight's public hearing before we move on? I just make one final comment to Mr. Noon's comment about 
the traffic on Oak Street. Now, jumping ahead to the next phase, I hope the planning board will bear in mind uh, entrance or exit from that lot onto Oak Street. You've got the doggy daycare one already there. And going around that corner is very dangerous now. I have no idea what's going in there. This is way out in front. But if the planning board could just pay particular attention to an uh, entrance or an exit from that lot onto Oak Street. Thank you. Actually, also, there was, sorry, um, there was something that Mr. Palmieri mentioned in your, like, the comments, I think, for the, for the project about um, driveway access. You know, I thought maybe it was at least worth quickly, quickly initially, maybe, but it seemed like it might be some um, We yeah, can just, take um, as far as the zoning bylaws, I'm not sure if it's applicable, but, um, there's a, a, a section in there about common driveways servicing more than one lot. Right. Um, I'm not sure if this qualifies or that should be reviewed, but um, it's a zoning bylaw, and it, as such, um, a variance may be required. It's, um, I think it's something that, that needs to be decided. Yep. That whether or not we can give a, uh, allow them to use that common driveway until they so your final phase, you're looking at it having a driveway on site, and it's you're just looking to not do that a, right now. That's a placeholder. Don't think about that as being built. I see case. what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Um, you, you own all those properties, right? So if you wanted to, you could combine those lots. He doesn't own those two there. He just owns those. Yeah, he, he has no own that. Yeah. But you don't want to put them in common ownership. No, it doesn't make sense to put them in common ownership. So what Peter's pointing out is that given our bylaws, we we may have our hands tied somewhat with approving a site plan with a common driveway with another lot. Using as an entrance and exit. And that may require a variance because if it's in the bylaw, we may or may not have the ability to... Yeah. That would be for phase two. No. no for this phase. No, for this so phase, this he's, lot... He's, he's using this He's right. using oh, a see. driveway okay. on, on the adjacent lot. lot that's owned by a okay. different entity, I take it. Yep. It's yep. a different entity that owns the two properties? That's correct. Yeah. Well, we mean the, this property and this property. Yes. Right? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. What, what if it's a temporary condition, just contingent upon phase two? Being Sometimes it can be temporarily permanent. Yeah. You don't want to, why open the door? You don't have to. I think um, we're going down the road right now with something that's not quite clear. Right. You can speculate a lot around this, but. Right. I wouldn't. <laughs> what time is that site? So, site visit on the 20th, that's a Saturday. Um, do you want to say um, what time is good for people? 9 30, 10 o'clock? 9 30? Um, when are the kids playing basketball? <laughs> I'd say 9.30. He, he's all over the place. Oh, you mean at... Um, right. They start at Wolves Den at 9 o'clock. All right. 9 o'clock. You want to say 9 o'clock? Yeah. Can, we, can you guys do that? I, I can't do that, too. No, oh, the no, 20th no, doesn't work? I can have somebody there to, to walk you around. Do we want to do the 21st? We can do the Sunday. Sunday the 21st, is that not good for you, Andy? Can't do that. Okay, let's go if, back to the 20th. If, if the 20th works, I mean... It yeah, well, all we need is somebody on the site. Right. Yeah. All right, so we'll say the, the engineer's 20th fine. 9 a.m.? I'll volunteer you. <laughs> Can somebody from your office meet us there? No, Anybody. Okay. We'll, we'll work it out. Somebody yeah. with... With, uh, with one knowledge. of your organizations will be there. Okay. Saturday, May 20th at 9 o'clock in the morning, we'll go take a look at the, Great. the drive flow. Um, we've heard that there are comments about um, the aesthetics of how this is going to look in the next 6 to 12 months. That's the other thing we'll be looking at. Are there any other, and about the traffic pattern, ultimately that's always one of our biggest discussions at Planning Board on any of these site plans. Um, anybody yeah. else have anything so from the row of abutters? Just for the just for the front buffer yeah, area yeah. and the fencing. Um, I think if, uh, grading this, putting a little buffer, putting a fence here, people would think it was night and day. It would almost look like a park on the corner. 
Yep. That sounds good. That sounds good. Okay, good. so we'll continue so with my we have motion. A motion on the <laughs> floor to um, continue the public hearing. Aye. 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 All right. It's May 20th. May 20th. May 20th. Saturday morning. Yep. Nine o'clock. Saturday morning. Nine a.m. Nine a.m. And then we're gonna. It'll. Then we'll talk about it on Monday the twenty-second at eight p.m. Yep. And is uh, is there anything that can be staked out there to give us some reference points prior to? Well, there. It well, is the staked out are. right now. Yeah. Okay. That's the. To show at least this, like the rear uh, rear boundary this lines, etc. Line right okay. Okay, and then this fence here is the property line. All right. Okay. So and while we're there, we'll probably take a cruise along the property up on Oak Street and see what we see there. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, you mean the right? Of, okay. These are two separate things. Okay. I know you want to put them together at the hip. We need this fellow's cooperation. <clears throat> All right. So where are we at this? And you want to just right, make so the motion and close this part of here? Well, we already moved to um, extend it to the 20th. No, no, no. I mean, where are we at, Mr. Chairman, with, let's say, like the next order of business? Or, oh, the next order. Where do you order. want to go yeah, with yeah, this? We're moving right, so on. We're, we're closing this. Yeah. We've already voted to continue, continue it. Yeah. So yeah. we don't have to close it because we voted to continue I'm not asking to close the public hearing. Are we done with this session? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes. I think we're good. Thank you. So we have 15 minutes now to go through Matthew's routine administrative matters. Great. Can I thank the planning board for your courtesy? Thank you. Thank you. Good. Don't speed going by my house, though. Never. Has he been speeding? No, he usually toots. I usually say hello to the police officers. <laughs> I'm sorry, a speed stop? What did they call them? They don't call them traps, right? Not anymore. Oh, a speed trap? Um, Peter, what do you... I guess the only question is whether we should move... Let's take a vote on the request for transfer of funds. I, 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 I just want to make sure no one... Transfer from what? Sure, that's fine. Before Number we one. Yeah. 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 Well, you can't take it from our lawyer's account because we don't have one. All right, you can't take it from our paper and, and pencils because we don't have one. Uh, what else? What else can we transfer up on? No. I think you have to go to an advisory. Don't you? I want to get my fingers on that sidewalk for myself. Okay. All right. So we have gotten notice that our overtime line item is in a deficit position. Um, we did not have any advance warning that that was going to happen. I got a question. <laughs> who, created the, who created the overtime uh, line item? So last year, um, we were told, I have an email from um, the town administrator to okay. Dan Taylor yeah. our, as our chair, indicating that he would put money into an overtime line item after we questioned the fact that this was going to be in the clerical union yeah. and for the first time in our history right. would require the payment of overtime correct um and so that was done yeah i don't think at that point we had much say on how much was went into the overtime line oh, item so, so matthew and dan have since gotten together and come up with estimates for overtime for the budget that's going to town meeting tomorrow night right um they haven't told us what portion of that is actually being recommended and I have to go back and look at the budget to see. Um, so my feeling is that we. No, it just needs to be signed. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah, just sign it. Yeah, so we're we're so gonna. So take one and sign it. Simple. The the the. the uh, but realistically, this falls on. Oh, the did you already? You typed this out. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, I did that. Can request um, fifteen hundred or something. Um, can we have a vote? So Matthew has typed out a request that says an insufficient amount of 1150 was estimated for overtime fiscal year 2017. The position of planning board assistant was previously salaried, was changed to hourly union with the new hire in July 2016, and so whoever made the original estimate did not have anything to base it on. Therefore, the original balance of 1150 placed in the account for overturn, 
overtime turned out to be too low. The overtime paid out is already 599 over this amount. There are still two months remaining in fiscal year 2017. The amount requested of 1500 should be enough to cover this 599 plus the anticipated future overtime in fiscal year 2017. Thank you. Um, just, just for uh, clarification, the former person with this job got comp time. So. That's why there wasn't, there wasn't a problem with overtime. Right. If she went to a meeting, uh, she had overtime. It was comp, comp time. time. Right. So they have, but. I understand they changed the rules. Right. So they changed the rules. Yep. And. We didn't really have any say in that. So they have requested that the amount of overtime be, that we be more realistic in our budget for next year, but I have not had a chance to look at the final budget to see whether we got I what do, we requested I for next year. I do have a question on that payroll, though. What's, that, that, that can't be correct. What? Is that correct? What, this thing? The payroll form, yeah. It says longevity, $850. You getting longevity already? No, that's just, I think if there's a thing for longevity, that's just like what they're, what they're putting in or, or what somebody decided to put as... as no, I understand. But I, I don't think I've gotten any longevity. I don't think I should be getting No. No, but you know what? I think they took it out of that budget line item. You see what I'm saying? So they, they moved money around already is right. what they've done. Right, so they're, they're taking that money that they had built into there and used that to pay in the overtime. I don't think. No. I don't think they're using it. For, I don't know they're why they're um, calling it longevity. When it's yeah. You know that it's possible that no, could have been, they have overtime there. That could have been from Maryland. The country, oh, she, you know what? Maryland, Maryland, you know Maryland didn't. Leave no, Maryland July probably got the A15 because right. she worked July. So, that was probably no, no. That she worked right. past July first right. last and for and this fiscal year. Right, that was hers. So that was hers. Right, and, and presumably some of this salary is also from Maryland. I would assume this. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Just, just the regular salary. Yeah, well, no, but the overtime is probably all mine. It says amount ex expended to date exactly is thirty-eight thousand eight hundred ninety-four dollars eighty-six cents. Unexpended balance is eighty-four eighty-six. Mm. Doesn't that Include that's going to include your overtime. No, that's yeah. the rest of the salary. Right. That's overtime. the salary. That's why they're asking overtime a request to bump to 1150. Okay, right. They can't just okay. co mingle accounts, if you will. So, can we can I have a, a motion from somebody that you authorized me to sign this as the vice chair of the committee? Since Dan did send a note that he can't make it tonight because he has um, a stomach bug. Do we all have um, to sign yeah. an additional bus? It just says uh, signed by, like, the chair. Okay. So I can't sign as the chair, but I could sign as the vice chair. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion to the effect that the vice chair in this matter be able to uh, sign sure. authorization for additional overtime payment to our planning board secretary, Mr. Matthew Hine. I mean, I could... I could make a new one and change it to vice chair. Yeah, that's, that's all right. right. So, no. That's right. She's, <laughs> no. She's actually the chair at the moment. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, yeah. acting Technically, for the yeah. meeting. Technically, you're the chair. Right. Right. You're anyway, I signed I, it. Uh, yeah. All in favor? Oh, yeah. Motion made, second. We'll get a little extra in your retirement now that you've been in Jim, do you vote you in favor of that? He seconded it. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> so we're all in a favor. Um, The other thing, Matthew, what are you? What else do you have on your administrative checklist? Uh, Minutes. I do have a few things, unfortunately. Yeah. Make, a, to, make uh, a motion that we accept the uh, minutes as printed for the mon uh, Monday, May first uh, meeting. Why do I have this? Oh, okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that's out of the way. All right, what else do we have, Matthew? Uh, let me take a look here. Um, for Bristol Estates, if you guys can grab that extension for that. Um, the deadline was um, May 20th, and I know you guys have already voted to approve it, um, but I'm not sure if we're going to get like the 
the decision done and signed and filed, the decision right. conditions and everything done and signed and filed by then. So I took the precaution of getting Owen Kelly to sign a request for extension today. To what? Just to, to, um, to July 9th, 60 day extension to July 9th. I'll make a motion to, what's the. Uh, the Bryce Way uh, sub, Subdivision Plan 1603. Bristol Estates. Oh, Bristol Estates. Oh, Bristol sub, Estates. Subdivision 1701. It's titled Bristol Estates. It's located at 73 Taylor Street. The extension uh, deadline would change from May 20th to July 19th, 2017, at the request of the developer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I'm sorry, I'm with the ayes category. Aye. Okay. Give me two um, eyes. Um, Do we have anything else? Yeah, so um, so this is very um, Okay, so Ken Fry's um uh you know the, the guy with RK centers. Yeah, exactly, yeah. RK centers. So apparently he's been talking with the the MassDOT um about having the trees, I guess the trees along the edge of Route 3, there's, a, there's an idea to, to chop them down, which, uh, and he's willing to pay the DOT to do that. Uh, it's actually DOT land, it's just some trees along the edge of the highway. But isn't that gonna make it look worse until something's up there? I think it's just like a kind of a line of trees, like a thin yeah. buffer of trees, and for him it's what, worth it to, to knock them down because it gives Arcane. his yeah, properties more visibility. So apparently, according to him, um, He's actually willing to, the DOT would still have to do it because legally it's their land, it's their job to sort of maintain the highway, but he's willing to, to pay them back. And so I guess there's been discussions with Josh Cutler, um, apparently about like, and he's willing to ask the DOT to do it, but he wanted to check with, um, with Ed Thorne to make sure he wasn't stepping on Ed's toes. And Ed said, um, you know, if it's okay with the planning board, it's okay with me. And so then Ken Fry, so I've actually got Ken Fry's schedule to come on June 12th. But it also occurred to me that potentially if you guys might just be willing to say it's okay, go ahead. Or you might decide you want to actually talk with Is this the lot up by the jurisdiction? This is the lot by Lowe's? Above Lowe's? Yeah, behind Panera and, right. and here's Taco above. Bell. The SDOT wouldn't have cut down the trees unless, no. No. They wanted, unless RK centers requested right. when you cut down the trees. <laughs> and once you cut down the trees, what kind of buffer are we getting rid You're of? You're not going to get any. Protection, uh, softening of the uh, traffic noise. I'd be concerned about going along, you know, kind of endorsing that well, that approach things, yeah. before we see the site plan. I'm not saying yes or no. I'm just saying it's nothing to do with us. Right. Well, That's it does. They give it, it, it. does because of. If he needs the help of our representative in order to get it done, right. and our representative is asking different. us if the town yeah, wants it. That's different. He's just talking to Mass DOT and. That's, that's well, he's talking to Mass DOT because he's already purchased the, 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 the dead, dead roadway, all right? So he has a connection with somebody there. And if that's an office building that's going up that he's looking at, being able to look onto that so he can advertise that he has office space, I don't, I don't necessarily think he'd do, want to do that. Isn't there, <laughs> isn't there a buffer required? Yes. No. Yeah. No. Oh, I'm not sure. Well, a, oh, we wouldn't necessarily require a buffer on the, on the state highway, highway property. Isn't there a buffer between his property line and you know the, yeah, the, the state? You know the state puts up all property. types of, right. of, right. of, and, and of that's, that's fencing all to block noise. You have natural noise buffer right well, there. They do the that. Trees. They do that around residential areas. The, <clears throat> listen, you have people eating that are also going to be affected by this. That aren't at night when there's traffic. It's not, it's not shouldn't just be about that particular I, landowner. I, I if the, if he didn't go in and s just scarify the land, shall we say, right, probably right up to that fence line. I'm not quite sure. Uh, can't quite visualize here, but if he took out his buffer effectively, what's left for a buffer but the trees owned by the Department of Transportation and the highway right. or whatever? That's correct. And we so had no if he didn't reviews. do that, we probably would take the trees down on the highway. Who cares? We still got a buffer. The combination of the two leaves it just again oh, a naked problem. spot. Right. Why, why, I'd so I'd, see, I'd rather see him put some restoration of trees on so, his well, side before they eliminate the, the other ones. Well, that's what they're yeah, asking yeah. us to do. Yeah. He's asking the help of our state representative. DOT can come in tomorrow, oh, Jimmy, and us. take them out. They want to do it on the Representative is giving us the courtesy 
Although he didn't give me the courtesy of warning me. <laughs> I'm telling you, um, Jim, if, if DOT came along tomorrow, you know it and I know it. If DOT came along tomorrow and removed those trees, there would not be a thing in the world we could do about it. You're absolutely correct. No, right. but they're giving us You work us on roadways so. yourself. So all we can then do if we're trying to maintain some buffer is to bring this applicant in and say, install it. And then go take out the uh, go get DOT to take out your trees. I think we and should. If he says stuff it, DOT is going to take them out anyway. Ah, we're not going to win that one either. So don't you think we're better off if the applicant's willing to come in on June 12th? Yeah, have the applicant come in before he has DOT that. do anything. Maybe he can mitigate some of this. Because if he has DOT do it and then comes into us, it's not going to be a happy meeting. Well, again, he, he's he's only requesting of a state agency to remove something if they want to do it. And it sounds like he's he's offering to, to actually pay them for. It. What do I care? Who pays the state? Yeah, we don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if the state pays the state. No, not for him. No, we just had a conversation. I think we're just. But it sounds like the best thing for him to come on June 12th or whatever it is, and he can explain it quite better than I can. As far as informing it, yeah, as an informant. Listen, if they widen the road, they can take the trees. Thank you. Yeah, maybe that'll Okay. Too, yeah. If they widen Route 3? Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll bump out there. Well, yeah, we'll allow uh, <laughs> to take the tree. Well, put another sign up that says, Welcome to Pembroke, for crying out loud. They put a little sign. Marshfield and Hanover. Where the hell did we come off? You saw they put up a little <laughs> sign. Oh, wait, did you see they put up a little mint? Yeah, sign? yeah, like there's this other place you can get off right here, too. <laughs> we have the whole damn. We, it's all contained within Pembroke, and we're not even on the sign. Okay, what else? All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's move on. Let's Send him over to Hanover. That's only eight miles that way. I think right. that's, I think as far as routine and Mr. matters, we got another public hearing, right? All right, so why don't. No. No, Bryson Way is just no. voting um, to okay. approve conditions. We already voted, we already closed that public hearing on Bryson Way. Mm -hmm. So now we're on just the, um, the approval of conditions on the Bryson Way extension subdivision plan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the draft is hmm? in your. Yeah. It's in your packet. Are, there people, are there people out there that want to come in for this? Or the door shut? Who is it? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's this thing. I don't know. And then we also have. Uh, oh, the, the, no, but the, the landowner might want to <coughs> see what's going to happen. And then we have this from. Um, from Peter. I'm not here. I'm just. So for that, once, I guess, like, once you decide. Who's going to make the motion and second it? I can put that to the final version. I can do it in like 30 seconds. Oh, but we, we still have time to talk about the town meeting. I think, right, why don't we move on to Bryson Way for now? Yeah, yeah that's what I meant. I mean, for yeah. that. He can, he, can, he can amend that. As he it's, not, it's not finalized, so to speak, just because there are a few things where I'd have to, like, say who made the motion, who seconded So you have that in your packet, Brian? All right. So anyway, then, then we just got to read it. Sort of you, want, you want this read out? Okay, I'll read it out. So do you have, yeah. do you guys have to read Brian out the entire... Yeah, just took my note. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think for the waivers, you guys definitely did not actually vote to approve the waiver. So, the rest of the so the recommendations of Peter that we have a... Um, these items be included in the conditions? Yeah, Are these in, already in here? They're in there, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, we don't have to cross-reference. I deleted the two that you mentioned. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so this this letter that that's in draft form right now, with the approval of conditions, um, incorporates all the comments from Maryland Associates. Yeah, it incorporates all his. I've gone over with Peter. Um, so I think it's all ready to. Uh, this one's right. Should be right here. No, yeah, right there. That's it. All right, so anyway, on the uh, uh, you say we approved it, right? So we approved the subdivision plan, mm -hmm. and now we're just voting on um, conditions. conditions. So I'll uh, move regarding uh, subdivision. There are three waivers. Um, on, it's on the top of page three. Okay. And they're listed on the first page of the drawings. We did grant the waivers. It was the length of the dead end street, the sidewalks not yeah. being required on both sides of the street, and the roadway the section. section. Yeah. 
Okay, so, so you did vote for it. Right. So no, you I mean I wrote voted voted unanimously just sort of anticipating what you'll do, but but you guys have not you know you haven't you haven't done anything with the Senate yet, have you? Well you guys have not actually voted to approve the waivers or to grant the waivers in the public hearing. Have you back in the number? You did not. We should have, right? Oh well, well, I did grant March seventeenth. March seventeenth. So, in, in the spirit of moving ahead. Yes. This is clear as mud. Um Let's wait until we get to those waivers and grant them because they part of the plan. Well, should we grant the waivers before we go through the conditions? Okay, uh, sure. I'll make a motion that we uh, grant the following waivers. Do you want to take them one at a time? I think we can take them okay. together. I'll make a motion that for um, subdivision plan number 1603 and Hill Bryson extension. We grant the following waivers, section 4, C4A, length of dead end streets, section 5, D1, sidewalks required on both sides of the street, and plate number 4, typical roadway section. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, those are in fact voted unanimously. So now, Brian, do you want to... Go through the conditions on the record? Uh, yeah, the, uh, a move that relative to the subdivision plan number 1603 entitled Bryson Way Extension, dated April 12th, 2016, <coughs> excuse me, revised July 5th, 2016, revised October 13th, December 1, 2016, December 9th, 2016, revised further on January 20th, 2017, and revised March. 17th, 2017. Whew. The planning board votes the final conditions of approval with the following conditions. Uh, one, prior to the release of any lots, the developer will execute recorded easement to the town of Pembroke on behalf of itself and its assigns granting the town perpetual access for repair and maintenance if necessary and a covenant to the town not to fill or alter the drainage or other easement areas. Two, a stop sign shall be placed at the intersection of the subdivision roadway and Old Washington Street. Uh, three, note that the developer and its successors and assigns are responsible for maintenance of the roadway according to Section 4C5 of the Town of Pembroke Rules and Regulations governing the subdivision of land. Four, except as waived by this board, all applicable rules and regulations governing the construction of roadways in the town of Pembroke and Massachusetts DOT standards shall apply to construction of this roadway. Five, the developer shall provide for water as per the regulations of the Department of Public Works. Six, the developer will provide drainage calculations reflecting any revisions to the planning board prior to endorsement. Seven, the subdivision entitled Bry uh, Bryson Way Extension is limited to 13 residential lots consisting of 12 proposed new single-family houses and one existing single-family house. As shown on lots 1A, 2A, and 1 through 11 on the subdivision plan, the open space lot and the drainage easement are shown on the subdivision plan shall not be built upon. Eight, correctness of plans is the responsibility of the developer and will includes, include its successes and assigns. Nine, after endorsement, but prior to the release of any lots, the developer shall obtain written approval of the subdivision plan's proposed construction from National Grid. Any changes to the design must be submitted to the planning board. No trees or bushes will be planted around transformers or over underground utility lines. Uh, let me see, where are we here? Ten, okay. except... Insofar as specifically waived by these conditions, all current planning board rules and regulations shall apply to this subdivision. 11, prior to installing driveway aprons, the developer must contact the Department of Public Works. 12, accurate as-built plans and profiles of all subsurface utilities, including but not limited to water, gas, sewer, drainage, electric, telephone, cable TV, show horizontal and vertical locations plus minus one, foot shall be filed with the planning board in the Department of Public Works. 13. The owner contractor shall comply with the following special construction procedures. A. The contractor shall provide a detailed sequencing of construction to the board and its engineer at approximately two-week intervals. 
B, the contractor is required to notify the planning board's engineer in the planning board by phone or fax 48 hours prior to required inspections and to call immediately should he or she deviate from the schedule submitted. 14, with reference to the waivers requested on the coverage page of the drawings by Steinbeck and Taylor, dated April 12, 2016, revised July 5th, October 13th, and etc. dates. The board grants the following waivers. A, uh, section 4C4A, dead end, length of dead end streets. B, section 5D1, sidewalks required on both sides. And C, plate number four, typical roadway section, as previously voted and approved by this board. 15, the developer shall pay a sum equal to the cost of construction of the sidewalk on one side of the roadway for which the developer has been granted a waiver, as specified in section 5D1, <coughs> Town of Pembroke rules and regulations governing the subdivision of land. This payment must be received by the planning board prior to the release of any lots. The initial estimate of the amount by Merrill Engineering is $15,568, as given in a letter dated January 17, 2017. 16. A certification by registered professional engineer shall be provided to the planning board stating that the roof stormwater recharge system for each of the homes has been designed and constructed as shown on the plans and in conformance with the Massachusetts DEP stormwater regulations. 17. The relocated trailhead access shown on the plans shall be constructed as part of the subdivision and the existing donation wall. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and benches on the existing trailhead access shall be really, excuse me, relocated to the newly constructed access. 18, the developer will address and comply with all the concerns contained in the Merrill Associates, Associates letters dated November 14th, 2016, February 7th, 2017, March 29th, 2017, and May 8th, 2017. 19. The approval of the planning board is conditioned upon the construction of ways and installation of municipal services being completed by two years from the date of approval. If construction of the ways and installation of municipal services is not completed by May 8, 2019, then approval shall be automatically terminated. Second. Thank well, you. I might have went. All those in favor? Aye. We need one more. Aye. Ha. <laughs> Opposed? Glass of water. We have, we have to say <coughs> just one form or all, four, all five forms. Is <laughs> Jim a letter today? Yes. Yeah, he's yeah, got some comments. Yeah, yeah if it's in there. Mm -hmm. um, so we all voted, should we all can sign the plans? Yeah. A uh, condition letter. A condition letter. Do we have one that we can sign tonight? I can make it in like two minutes. Great. Okay. 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 So okay. do that while we keep talking. So, the, so on the, I guess on the... On the first page, then, where it says moved and seconded, that would be Wait, Brian, moved by Brian, seconded by me. And, <coughs> uh, and then on the waivers, we'll say as previously voted and approved by this board. And then everything else is right. Okay. So, with that behind us. So, I'm sorry, for, for the, the waiver is on page three. As previously voted uh, by this board. Or so approved. Where, where approved. Where voted and approved. So where I wrote as voted unanimously, it should say as previously voted and approved. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you could do it once. Grants the following waivers, comma, as previously voted and approved by this board, colon, okay. and then list the waivers. Yeah, okay. And then you only have to put it once. So moving right along at 815. Discussion of proposed zoning bylaw changes and the warrant for annual town meeting for the Center Protection District. We also have in our packages an email that was sent by um, the attorney for the developers of um, the project at 220 Center Street. Oh, Peter, yeah, I guess we are. We're good. We're all set? I think okay. so. Um, good. We have a. Uh, you don't want to hear this discussion? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I better get out. <laughs> get out while the getting's yeah. good? Yeah. Get out while the is still. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have an email that I cannot yeah. locate at this moment from Bob Galvin, Robert Galvin, who is the attorney for the developer of 220 Center Street, 
suggesting that he's concerned that our um, proposed articles 18 and 19 will, will um, preclude the project that we have previously approved in part. Um, actually, did we approve it entirely subject to just some we setting of conditions? I think that's no. what we did. No. It says, I am told the board approved. But he's saying that... We took up two parts of it. I tried to make this clear the other night. We took up special permit, yeah. and you took up site plan, or part of the site plan, but the only thing I saw us approved the other night was the issuance of special permit. Not the site plan approval. Well, you still have landscaping. Remember I brought up a bit about, oh, there's got to be landscaping. Be, oh, yeah, that's all going to be contained. However, there's one clear thing that was not approved on that meeting, right. which is uh, the cen you, center you aspect. The, you moved or made a motion to continue the public hearing for architectural style of the town May 22nd, 2017. Which is the center protection. That's correct. Which was right. part of the public hearing. So have we... So we haven't 100% approved the project. So I can see where Bob's saying that... Yeah, he thinks we either have to indefinitely postpone it or effectively... Uh, Modified in such a way that would uh, so grant care, grandfather. The decision didn't get filed. No, well, no, we haven't set conditions. We haven't. Um, it's going to town meeting, right? Tomorrow night. So we yeah. we approved portions of the site plan of the. Um, I'm sorry, the special permit. Okay. But we did. But we yeah. continued the public hearing on the. Um, site plan. No. On the architectural details with regard to the. Center Protection District requirements for site plan approval. So, so we can't just go ahead and approve it tonight? No, we can't really. We, we still have to work through the landscape plan and the architectural details. So we're... Yeah, <coughs> so what Galvin's asked is, he, he, he's right, I mean, in terms of what his interpretation is. We didn't give him... <coughs> A final approval. Right. Right. <coughs> so we can do... So I'd be willing to say, to amend the article, to say, for instance, uh, the two things he needs is he needs 350 feet of... Uh, and he needs yes, mixed use. Right. Well, we gave him that. He did the special permit. But he's saying that because we haven't filed our decision and there hasn't been an appeal period on the special permit, that it would still come within this bylaw. Correct. So he does need mixed use, even though we voted on it. Well, <clears throat> let's back up. Um, there's two things we have on the table, right? Um, 300 foot in depth, yep. of which his project goes back approximately 350 feet. Right. Now I'm talking specifically to 220 Center Street here, yep. right? Nothing yep. else. Yep. He needs that. Right. He needs something that tells he can go further back. Yep. <laughs> or two. We have to then say, uh, amend the article on the floor to say, uh, yes, the mixed use is gone, but it's effective January 1, 2018. For projects that have... I, I see. So we, we got to post the data. 19, but how does 18 affect them? It just says where the center protection district is. He's more than 300 feet. So his project that has to fall within the Center Protection District regulations is more than 300 feet deep. Oh, I got you. Okay. So his project and if we want would to, not get if, the benefit of the mixed use. If, he needs it, he yes. And, and there's a feeling out there, Jim, that 300 feet, according to some property owners up in the center, may be too little. So should we grant uh, a further depth than the way it's worded today is it's 300 feet or all of the lot. Well, some of these lots go back five and 600 feet along Madison Street. Well, and they also, so in this case, are added to the if lot. If we want to modify it, then we have to have some kind of language available tomorrow night but, but I'm just that says what we, that depth will be. If we take the mixed use out, then it's really just the depth. Now it becomes just the definition of where's the center protection right. district, and we wouldn't look at the buildings and all that. And if it's more than 300 feet back, we don't care as much what the building looks like. But no, no, no. 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 That falls into no. The, once it the goes beyond 300 is, feet. I'm yeah, once it goes beyond a. 300 feet, it would be residence A. Under our bylaw change, under Article 18, if it goes beyond 300 feet, it's not part of the center protection district, and that portion of the lot then becomes residence A. 
which it was before. Which is what it which was, was before. Everywhere in town that isn't a business owner is, is residential. We're good with that. It's not well, a problem. Well, so there's, all right, so the way I see it, there are a couple issues here. The first being 220 Center Street. We have a proposal that the developer spent a lot of time and money on and been through several boards, and we've partially approved. That proposal could become moot or need further variances if these articles were passed at town meeting. We will likely face substantial op opposition at town meeting if we do not in some way accept out a pending project. Secondly, we have the issue that there are several people who came to the public meeting, public hearings on Articles 18 and 19, who brought up two specific issues not having to do with 220 Center Street, but just having to do with their other pro properties. Their properties. And they said that the 300 feet is not deep enough. If they have a 500 foot property, they believe they should be able to use the whole 500 you foot know, property. Well, first off, is that what did, we, when they purchased the property, what was it? Residence. 300 feet. feet. And then the and then the second and then the second and then the final issue we have tonight to look at is on the mixed use. People also feel as though there are projects that would like to get underway before we change the rule. And there was some discussion in that public hearing context. I think when Jim, I don't know if you were there, but I think the rest of us were there, where they were talking about do we say that doesn't take effect for six months or a year so that you give sort of you say okay if you want to take advantage of the mixed use bylaw and apply for a special permit for mixed use which requires a special permit from this board to allow mixed use at all um, that you have to do so by a date certain or else lose that right forever now there's some thought that if well, you that would take care of other people as well well, Not that would take care of 220 Center Street if we delayed the the onset of these regulations. It wouldn't. It would. No, the two people that were complaining. It would about. not. It would not deal with them because it's still 300 feet even in the mixed use right now. Unless you're going to take and change the. Well, no, oh no! People well, are right now argue that it's not 300 feet. Right now, the way it's written, the fair reading of the bylaw right yeah. now, is that it's not 300 feet. It's 300 feet or the depth of the lot. I think Bob is saying to change 18 and 19 to a time certain. Or to exempt out his project. He doesn't really care right now. I don't now. like doing that. No. no. The so easiest way to do this do is put an effective date into the future. Yeah. That's the well, there's also, so. there's a part of me that doesn't mind having an effective date into the future in that to the extent we do want to bring some synergies to the town center, Having a date certain might encourage people to bring those synergies yeah. sooner rather than later. Yeah. yeah like it's been going. It might bring them right to the uh, board of variant, variant ZBA and get 50 units in there in the meantime. Well, the that is a concern. Ever. So I don't, I'm, I'm concerned about synergies when we talk about our ZBA. I think another good thing about giving it a, a date in the future is that intuitively that's that's very simple to explain on town meeting floor. Right. So like that's you just say it's exactly what it says in the warrant. Accepted will be it will apply on whatever July first, twenty eighteen. That's well, pretty other, intuitive. That's I, not going to confuse. And people. I think what you should do is contact Mr. Galvin tomorrow morning and ask him if he has proposed language to that effect. Mm -hmm. But we probably need to get the language still approved by town council. Do you think no. we have town for, time for that or <laughs> well, not? That's, that's it. We'll submit it. We'll, we'll bring it tomorrow night and say, yeah. do you like this or do you want to rewrite it right now? I mean, that's basically and we'll give to town council the same option. Difficult. Difficult. Yeah. I mean, I could try to call. Control All right. So, so our best he'll, bet he'll is to ask Bob Galvin to provide language. Tell him that what we'd like to go with is his option um, three. three. Oh, oh no, no, two. No. It's not about any project to prove and awaiting yeah, the filing of decision. Many articles grandfathered. No, move. Grandfather in any projects that are approved prior to <coughs> January 1st, 2018. Yeah. There's no easy way to get the wording in there because it's all, it's all piecemeal. Uh, no, it's just, this is just one no, sentence. No, it's not so bad because. This is one sentence to be amended on town floor. Matt yeah. is absolutely right. Go in there with a paragraph or some convoluted 
three directional type thing, and everybody. Yeah, well, 19, we've got all these separate. I, I would oh, like you, to see us win the next one use to be that defeated. says this amendment to the bylaw shall, shall be effective for all projects. I want to see the next use. So you add yeah, one sentence that applies yeah, to the whole so article. It'll be approved. I'm sorry. Did I say defeated. <laughs> I mean it the other way around. Go reverse. And our, what, what is the date we feel comfortable oh, recommending on town meeting floor? January 1st or June 30th of 2018? Uh, January 1st. Okay. Is I'm everyone comfortable with that? What does that mean? That means they have to have their application in? No, this says approved by is what First we First off, is that how long did it take him to get his approval? Yeah, that's about that. All right. Uh, it, it's, it, you're uh, talking uh, about a, a year? Two years. So do we want to say yeah. application in or approval by? I, I believe any time you've got somebody who's submitted an application, they're under the current bylaw. The current bylaw is going to be in place. Right. So, so, so Bob seems to be taking a contrary position of that because they have an application well, in. I always thought it was the application that was in. That's it. Thank you. Right. You, you're in the. I don't know why Bob's the, saying. I really don't understand why he's saying this, but. Uh, well, that's what I've always been learned. In other words, if this effective date isn't until January of 2018, for instance. <laughs> Somebody comes along and submits an application and gets filed You're with that clerk on December 31st. It's covered by the old rules. It's on. So Bob also represents... But the only thing I know is that we, we're not under pressure to try to make a decision. Really. The only thing yeah. I know that doesn't uh, go that way is the... Uh, remember we had that with the um, ADA compliance? And the oh, for the neighborhood? It's at the time yeah. you start construction is when you can comply with ADA. So if you've had, you know, had a right. little plan for two or three years. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But I, t I talked with Bob Gavin on the phone about this today because he called me up because he's obviously he's highly concerned about it. Um, it's all and then he sent me the email. I said, you know, if you get some email, I'll, I'll pass it up to all the board members. And he seemed quite certain, you know, as an attorney, that the way it does work, at least under the, the normal mass general law, is that uh, it's not until... It's not until the applicant um, actually gets the, the decisions actually filed with town clerk that the applicant sort of, you know, it's not until the, that decision of granting site plan approval or is actually filed with town clerk that the applicant's foot is kind of in the door. So that decision actually has to be filed before the first legal notice of the public hearings of the zoning bylaw proposed changes, which is why, you know, McGill would not would not make it if this passes. So that, that's just kind of the way that Is works. that because it's site plan approval, not zoning? I'm not sure. Because no, I remember, not... like, years ago doing design work and, you know, being told, hey, this we need to rush this in the door, come up with some half-assed plan, oh, yeah. rush it in the door just to lock in the zoning. Yeah, I think that would be a different situation. Yeah, I think so zoning is different than site plan. Uh, uh, site plan isn't covered anywhere in law. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> maybe it's our... That's what yeah. he's nervous about. That. But I think, but Are they I, also but I concerned? You, but I assume you could, in, 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 I assume you could, as an amendment, just say, you know, anything that's, anything that's received or anything that's any application that's submitted before whatever January. That's why I want the language from him, though. You're trying to oh, anticipate yeah. where we're going, and I'm saying you one thing. Look at one. Move to indefinite postponement, right? Yeah. No. The articles, and then enact them yeah, next yeah, year. Yeah. If we went to go next year to enact no. these, when would we be filing them? And then someone would December, walk. right? Yeah, and once we file that in December, we've already canned their opportunity to get anything because now we've already posted it for the public hearing, correct? Right. So all Bob's saying is if you do this next year, you're really going to kill everybody by December once you go to file it. It's going to come under the new, uh, if it passes then, it would kill uh, the next use. So let's think of this. Why don't we just say January 1st? Okay, I, I don't it's already implied know. here that we could kill it by January 1st. So my other question on this is, so this will affect, is this will affect his project. What about the um, project right next to um, Kilcommon? Um, the Sealand project? This is already. They've been approved. All they'd have to come back right. in is seek another public hearing. Right. To, to modify it. Now, no, that's to up to the zoning board to but issue it or not. To no, that's that's our site plan, right? No, it, right now doesn't, if he needed anything, 
in there for, in terms of variance, but he was also approved. That was approved right. through the v board of ZBA. We didn't approve that project. The ZBA approved that project. But now that he, they now that so much time up. has elapsed, wouldn't he need a new permit, a new, um, wouldn't the special permit on the building of a business on that location with he, the mixed he, use? He'd come to us for He'd for have things. to come for a yeah. special permit. But because it was a long time ago, was, the right. ZBA could say, we're not going to hear it. Right. But, but if we say January 1st, 2018, no, he could come in. Though. Okay. He could come in his and modify his plan. Right. I, I, I think he'd have to come in and modify his plan. And, and I, I'm not sure that special permit would still be in effect this much later. It, it isn't. It's expired, I'm sure. I but think that, it's expired. It by doesn't now. mean that a board can't take it back up if it votes well, to do so. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah. But this, if does we does he have a right it, to it right now? No. no. No, but if we extend these new rules to January first, twenty eighteen, mm -hmm. he could come in with a with a with a request for a special permit between now and January. That's my point. And we'd yeah. take it up just like we take up any other special permit. Well, now we have a question. You did expire. Do we want to hear this or not? It, it doesn't say, you know, we say tonight two years to build your subdivision, right? Yeah. We have the authority, though, to either say grant extensions. You're done in two years if you're not all done or keep going. We grant extensions. So right, it's up to us. Right, but somebody could come in with a whole new plan. Not if it's a been approved plan. You can have to come back in with a new plan that's now back plan, into the public plan, hearing process, back into day one. Yeah, yeah, they'd have to go back to day one. Right. Okay. I guess yeah. I'm missing your question. Now. So if we if we if we extend this to January first, 2018, yeah. it will be open for them to come back in, he, right. and get approvals at that location. Yeah, but he might have yeah. that afterwards too. I think. Yeah. But okay. Because because someone could open a hearing. Because it was the uh, site was developed under okay. mixed use, in a way. Oh, so, uh, you yes, it wasn't constructed, but he may still have the. Some down the road have a right to come back. Yeah, and as long as the ver the ZBA, who is the issuer of the uh, allows it, allows it. That's the point. So if are they you say, no, we're not okay with do January first, twenty eighteen, or you just think? Uh, a little more time, and that, that can tell you the truth. Uh, I, was, I, was, I, I, I was thinking twenty eighteen. I no, I listen. You're either going to get them, or you're not going to. Either people. Yeah. That's crazy. Not people in. Why, why well, no, but this is for approval, not for application. Yeah, first off, I, I think I think the law is is that once you put it in there and collect stamps it as as a plan on the on here, it's so what so are you saying that we should grandfather any projects um, where the application is submitted prior, prior to January first? I, I think it does anyway. I mean it's already covered by law. Right. Okay. I think one they can they can make hey, the, they can say that whatever we, we can't get it done. Don't don't, don't forget, forward. nothing's final in this world. Right. Because Whatever we do tomorrow evening, in terms of a date, January 1, whatever, and or 350 feet or whatever we want to bring up for tomorrow evening, if we don't like it, it still can go to a fall meeting and be amended again. Right. There's no closing of the book here. So if it's an... All I'm saying is put something in place that we're on board with right. for tomorrow. I, I would go with January 1st. For application submittal date rather than a fully approved date, yeah. is that more comfortable? Right. Okay. Uh, but then the uh, but then the other so we we're asking Bob Galvin to suggest language to modify Articles 18 and 19 to to grandfather any project where an application is submitted by January 1st, 2018, where completed application by January 1st, 2018. But then the other question that submitted, uh, submitted application with plan. With plan. Well, that's yeah. That's why I say well, completed I application. Know. I don't want to, someone, completed don't want application. I don't want a piece of paper. I want a set of plans. <laughs> with a set of plans. Yeah. Okay, but then the other thing that came up at the public hearing that we had talked about was whether or not existing lots, not so what happened at 220 Center Street was they had an existing lot, and then they took additional land in the back, which probably makes adding, it less they dense. Kept adding to it. But they, but theoretically, one could keep adding to a lot See, and go I back would, and I back and do, back. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to the to the lot because there's, that's what the ZBA is supposed to be there for. You could get, you could get, go to the ZBA 
You're not really supposed to grant a variance just because just you think it's a good idea. I'm, no, I'm just saying is that <laughs> this, this, that's not, that's, this, that's this not their variance rule. Option. 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 But the problem is, is that you, with a lot right. have been at 300 feet. Right. But, but you see, this is the problem in this town as I see it. That we keep saying the bylaw, we, we put the bylaws more restrictive on the theory that people can go to ZBA for relief. Variances are not supposed to be granted except in the most extreme of circumstances. Wait a so tell me one that hasn't been. I well, I'm telling you, but, but, that point, but, that point. but we don't yeah, necessarily so want to feed to into that culture. Too, but you're right. You're right. We don't want to feed into that culture by saying right. that we're, we're going to have bylaws that apply unless. Unless you have a good plan, we don't that want to send people over to the CBA. For the bylaws should be things that people can count on, and even if you hate me, I have a matter of right that everybody has. It's not a question of who likes whom, or who's in favor, or who's not in favor. Bylaws are meant to provide uniform land use rules that don't just get. It, it's not a special permit where you kind of take into account these kind of mushy factors. We could say it can't but, be more than 300 feet uh, except by special but, permit because that's not a variance standard. That's a different standard. So just out of curiosity in this... Yeah. In this and we're, we're the special permit granting authority. Where are you going to so put that in that article that, it, that the, the land can't be altered, okay, to create... Let, let's say I have a lot that's 500 feet. It doesn't matter. We've changed it. No, you haven't. That out. No, you haven't, because we're going to change it again. <laughs> so, so that says it's, it's, it's now just a straight depth of 300 feet. No, right now it is, but she's but not, not talking that. No, so we're talking feet. about changing that. So, so let's say I have a lot that's 500 feet. Yeah. Right, but the lot next to me, you know, maybe that person decides they're going to sell it to me. And yep. it's It doesn't have, it has 300 feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's going to create a hardship in my development. So I'm going to grab... Someone else's feet from, feet from here. When does it? When, when do you stop allowing? But I would argue uh, that, that that's why we were saying existing lots as of today. Existing lots. Uh, yeah, that's but, yeah, what we talked about at the public hearing. Everything till January. Yeah, I mean. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. You're already giving people something by saying until January. You know what I'm saying? Seems to me like you're better off just sort of. Maybe just better just sort of holding firm to the 300 feet, saying it's 300 feet. It's 300 feet it's when you bought the property. Well, this this has been standing for how so, long? So the problem you have here is what Galvin's putting out in this letter. Without both of them, you're killing this guy's deal. Yeah, so we could have the till January for both of them. I'm talking about even past January, should this be more than 300 feet. Okay, we can change that at, at, try to leave it at, the, at the fall meeting. So for right now, Let's do this. Do well, feet, but keep in mind, the, say, right? the people who came to the public hearing who had those lots on Mattachusett mm -hmm. Street that back up to the cemetery mm -hmm. and, and a couple more, those people are probably going to oppose this bylaw if it has no it's, exception. That's true. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to be for it. No, first a lot of all, people are going to be against it. There wasn't one property owner there that has that 500 plus feet. I thought that there was, was at that meeting that I saw. You got the funeral home, you got the two building property, you got the bank. What about and you after got Smith? Smith? There was nobody, nobody more in than there. It has 300 feet. They're all single family home. And they don't go thing. back for more than 300 feet. And they do not go back more than 300 feet. So the real critical mass of people that was don't have 300 feet to start with. Okay. All right. But look. If you want to put a number on it, you know, I think 350 plus you got 10% more, which is 30 feet if you go into another yeah. district, right? So technically you got 380 now, feet. Now you're going to you create another article. Okay. I mean, yeah. how, how, how right. much do you want to try to micromanage this we, thing? <laughs> 300 is where we switched to residence A, so don't we kind of want two of those to match up? Yes. For consistency. What do you mean? What, I, don't, I don't follow. Yeah, three, rather than being 350 for center protection, but then residence A starts 300, don't we want No, no, no. If, if the center protection district is extended to 350, residence A starts after the 350, not at this, 300. Kind of here, that, if we extend yeah, the zone yeah. 50 feet, it goes to 350, right? Well, that means that residence A has now been pushed back to that 50 feet. 
And that's when residents say stops. But here's the other caveat. If you have a lot in two zones, right? In this case, uh, center protection and then uh, and then residence A. 30 feet of the residence A can still be applied to the first 350 feet. So in total then, you've really got 380 feet from the way. Okay? Right now that's 330 feet. Same thing applies, the lots in two districts. What they don't like is the ambiguity of that a bit. Yeah. Okay? Let and me... therefore, they want this business about lots in two districts to kind of really not apply. We'd yeah. let, rather see a firm yeah. well, footage. Well, it says you now, but they, they, they bought it in two different zones, didn't they? Yes, they did. All right. So let me ask you this, though. So, Paul, when you're saying that's what ZBA should be deciding, no, I would I'm say... No, I'm saying is that there, there, there is... A relief mechanism. There, there are relief mechanisms. There's court. There's all types of things that can that can cha make changes. But one of the things I wonder is sometimes when we've looked at the zoning bylaws over the last couple of years, we say, "Oh, that's not something we can do special permit on. It has to go to ZBA." Even when it's things that we well, wouldn't mind doing a special permit on. But our on. problem is, is that in some cases, our objection is when ZBA exceeds their authority and overdoes what they're supposed to do. I, I got you, but. There's a part of me that says if we feel like this might be something that could be flexible, why wouldn't we provide that yeah. it's 300 feet or such a, a greater depth that is approved by special permit? I, the way we have the ability to alter certain other elements of the I center protection district by Can special. You? We have with, it in. With, in a, with land like that? You mean with the use versus with, the, with, with other? The zone. With the no, zone? I don't think you can have a, 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 a flexible zone. You can't have no, a Why don't we, why don't no, we just go back only. and right. post facto right. if, no, so, no. If, what, if this is defeated yes, tomorrow night, zone. right? Well, We're back to square one. If we lose tomorrow night on this matter, on this article. It's right where it was. It's right where it was. If yeah. it is approved that mixed use would not, no longer be a use allowed after January 1 or what right. have you, Right. Why does that stop us from going to where you want to go? Okay. Which is how do we get something that works? I don't want All to right. rush into. All right, All right. you're going to try to cover too much and in this, all. and I think what we argue is this hasn't been success. Here's my argument tomorrow night. This has not been successful as applied. We have had now two projects that have resulted in 2,000 plus square feet of commercial space and some 45,000 square feet of residential area. How does that apply to what was on the paper? Right. Okay. Well, the, the so just that was let approved. us get rid of it, right. the mixed use thing, as it's worded today, and let us go back board. to the drawing board and we'll find out a better way of getting housing in here if that's what you really want, is housing in your center. Okay. All right, so the only thing we're going to change in Articles in 18 and 19 is to ask Bob Galvin for the language on um, grandfathering um, application submitted by January 1st, 2018. And Complete it with plans. And my question for that is, uh, what if he says the only way you can grandfather is for the date when it's approved? I mean, what if he says Mass General Law doesn't allow it to be the date? No, when no, it's Matthew. People and do it all the time. Yeah, no, it should. It should. You be can good. always put an effective right. date in there. It's yeah. not just. If you do not put a date as an effective date, it's effective the date of the vote, and it even goes back to the day of advertisement, as we've already been through. You can put a, a, a bylaw in, zoning bylaw, or a town bylaw, for that matter. Okay. Yeah. With a date, it, certain. Any date future. Okay. Yeah, that gives everybody a chance to see what's coming down the pike. And so this is an effective date, um, which means the effective date of the bylaw will be January 1st, 2018, and he'll have his approval on the way before that. So we should yeah. be fine. We should be Absolutely. fine for his project. As far as I'm concerned. And also, and also fine for anybody else who has a plan that they right. want to try to bring right. in before then. Exactly. Right. So if there's right. somebody that we're cutting off at the knees without intending I, yeah. to. I yeah, think the they've problem got something just ready to go right around the corner, but they're not going to have it ready by May 10th. Is it 10th. actually simpler just to think of it instead of the stuff about you have to submit it by, just to think of this conceptually as the, the this new zoning bylaw or this new amendment would become effective yes. January 1st, 2018. That's, that's fine, too. I that's think, to I think well, that's the way it's going to work, yeah. okay? But I'm not an attorney, Yeah. okay? I, I like to go in with the suspenders and the belt, as but, we've been yeah, told before, worry, all right? I even want the 
you know, the, the, the fist cuffs and the Kevlar. in my back pockets, ready to clamp them into my pants. And Bob Galvin actually does advise other towns. Absolutely. So he should he's know. a competent attorney. Yeah, he's, he's I'm a competent attorney. Oh, um, well, then I'm not saying well, that. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, though, if you even wrote an illegal opinion, I'd still want to go get place. another legal opinion. Um, so, we are on, um, the other thing is the um, other preparation for annual town meeting. There's that, that um, provision that's coming in about the director of municipal inspections. Oh, God. Do we want to have an opinion or make any statements as a board it. about that? It, does, no. it should not apply no. to the planning board. And I'm, it does, it does. I'm against it. End of story. Are you against it across the board? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but well, do we want to make an official statement from the planning board? I think. Like is you what can your always get up is. as an individual well, and speak I just, I just against think, it. I just think, frankly, it's a it's a it's a power grab. I think it's a, a way to manipulate and eventually eliminate boards. Uh, it's a slow it's a slow walk to a to a uh, certain yeah. certainty. Just a quick question: yeah. How does it affect? DPW. Me? No, not you. Oh, is it? No. They didn't include the DPW. They didn't include it doesn't DPW. affect the DPW, but it's creating it's creating positions that don't exist in this town. All right, for people unknown unknown entities, and I think first we can't afford what we have, and so far I think things have operated fairly fairly well. Can I just look, look quickly through that? I don't understand how you glue together. You know, wiring and plumbing and all that, they're all specific fees. Well, normally, first off, how do you do well, that? Well, you don't. You just have them all report up to one person. Wait a minute, how do you do that when you have all part-time inspectors? The whole point is... The and whole you've got point. three building inspectors that are part-time. They all now are going to report to this yeah, but, position. No, I think one of them is going to become the director, number one. Number two... I'm not sure that's I who's going to become the director, it, if I, I had to guess. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a smart way to be <laughs> right? doing... Well, I don't understand I don't know. I don't that big. how the people from that office are going to work with the people on the Board of Health. They're going to they're going to relocate offices as well. Yeah, but they got all going to first off is first off first off is the health department. Right, the Board of right, Health, board of health is an autonomous board that has more power than even the selectmen. All right, and it's not being treated that way in this town, but that's well, the truth. Is it? Okay, so we feel like the planning board. Right. Now, the other thing. Oh, I just sorry. You want that? I can't find my copy. Um, the other thing is, we have to talk about whether we're going to reorganize the planning board before we have the town meeting vote. Do we do we need to wait for town elections to reorganize the planning board? No, because everyone's running <laughs> who's, who's already wants here. Who to do it tonight? Tonight. Dan, I think, would rather that we reorganize sooner rather than later. He doesn't want to be here for the vote. Well, we're going to meet on the 22nd, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, we do yeah, that. Yeah, I think we always took you to that after the, after right the after vote. The, right yeah. after I mean, in, in front of, if we want to, we could even, what was the first thing going on at 7 o'clock or something? Uh, on the 22nd? Yeah. Well, is there any reason why we can't just reorganize tonight, though? But also, don't, what? don't forget, we're, we're also okay. meeting next, we're meeting next Monday also. Just don't forget, we're meeting next Monday. What's the next Monday? The Bruce Hughes Economic Development. Yeah, I'm not here that night. Yeah. I'm out of town. Uh, All right. I mean, so, what? Uh, do we what? have to kind of wait in case it's a write or something like that? Or? No. I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, but do we want to just do it right now? <laughs> got to read the whole damn thing and open up the... No, let's do it. Let's do it after the election. Let's wait until the first meeting after the election. Wait until after the election. Okay, Dan's having a heart attack. Well, don't worry about it. You're, you're the chairman right now, and you are the chairman right now. Um, Both. I don't know. He, I think he feels like a sense of obligation as the chair right, um, his, right his, now. His right now, now did you say you're not going to be able to come next week? So next week, and we knew this when we scheduled with Old Colony, mm -hmm. I'm out of town on a rare vacation. You are the chairman. I quit. <laughs> Well, if, 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 not till after no, next I week. Think if Dan comes next week, he can chair. <laughs> sure. Or we can... I mean, well, well, oh, if Dan's back, he's yeah. chair. He yeah. can chair. Oh, but I don't know if he's on a permanent uh, yeah. abstention. Listen, it's only a couple of weeks. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sure. If, if Dan isn't here, you're, you're, you're well, chair. Well, when's the election? But, you know, we keep putting... Are you putting, here next week? We, we keep, we keep next putting week? this on the point. agenda. Is there any reason why we don't want to reorganize? No. Just, no. Well, we I wouldn't be putting it even on the agenda. We, we got a new secretary. Marilyn would have held off till 
after the, the election. All right. right. All right. So then the last. Dan asked me to put on the agenda. That's fine. I, I don't. Yep. Not all secretaries are the same. <laughs> so then. <laughs> so then um, next. So tomorrow night, we're all at town meeting. Who is going to read the warrants? Um, he needs to know who's going to um, read the articles on town meeting floor. Oh, I don't know. You can read them. What happens? You're just going to read the verbatim what's the, on the article. Yeah, we just have to. Um, okay, it goes onto the floor, and then if I, any of us want to provide commentary, we exactly. just take it up from there. Do you want to read it? No, I, I think you should read it. <laughs> you should read it. And should I give commentary or no? No, just read just it. Read it. Read it. Read it, and then. Stop. The mod the Let it go from, from there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And wait until some people come up. And All right. And I think as long as you make it clear that you're proposing whatever the amendment to, it'll be it'll apply January 1st, 2018. Can we? Um, so this is how it's so printed in the art in the warrant. Sometimes they modify what they read, and it's what they read is not what's in the warrant. Can we modify the motion? From what's in the warrant? It's supposed to be what's in the warrant. It's supposed to be what's in the warrant. Just to clarify. You have to offer an amendment to it in writing. Right. Just to clarify, that's, that's the, the verbiage that Sabrina gave when, from Joel Bard about We have to give it to the, the moderator. should be read. Yeah, you have to give him the... With, is that the change? Yes. We'll give you that before. We're going to have another set of this tomorrow night. Yeah. Okay? And if it, it's probably going to be identical to this. But it could change. Okay? It could change after the uh, attorney looked at it. But this is all we're going to say right now is move this. So the question is, at what point are we right. going to move to amend? Well, well, let's just say now some debate takes place, mm -hmm. right? And, the, and now you get back up and say, okay, we would like to amend the article. And the chairman, uh, the moderator is going to say, I need that, right? That's why we need Bob, for Mr. Gallman tomorrow written, yeah. to have that language ready to roll. But we're, not gonna, that, no, to the but we're not going to present the amendment. Can you just read out the way we want it? No. No, it has to be no. the As printed no, under the article. But should I immediately stand up and, and move to amend? No, I would read the article and then say the planning board wants to amend this article. Article accordingly. According to, and add the language you want to amend it so to. So do that before we start the discussion. You I can, would. Because yeah. I think if we do it before we, start, change, the when, we start the discussion, it'll change the tenor. Yeah, it'll, it, it'll, it'll take some people and sit them down. It it, won't. Here's the best advice. Show up a little on the early side and, and bring the amendment to the moderator and, and ask him Steve. how he wants to yeah. have it handled. Okay. He yeah. runs the show. Good idea. Good idea. Thank <laughs> you. When in doubt, go to a somebody. We have somebody know. who's Sorry. sitting in on the meeting. Did you have something you wanted to bring up to oh. the planning board? I don't. Okay. <laughs> Comedy <laughs> hour. All right, so what do we got? Do we have a... Um, I'll make a motion to adjourn. So oh, you. I'm sorry. I do it every <laughs> week. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. The motion, the meeting's adjourned at 9.53 p.m. Okay.